Why do I have this big smile on my face? Because I'm thinking about my friends. Uh, the title of this podcast is A Little Help from My Friends. You know, more and more as uh, I share about, you know, the practice uh, with my friends and colleagues, more people are becoming interested in, uh, in, in trying it on. And in doing so, they're experiencing a, uh, a reduction in stress and, and burnout, uh, ruminations, and anxious thoughts, uh, obsessive thinking. And they're able to experience more peace and acceptance in their life. And that creates an opening so they can serve more effectively as well as sprinkle kindness all over the place. And lastly, you know, they're able to invite a lot more joy in their life, which is a big deal. And uh, I'm just really grateful for my friends along the way, you know, those who are on the path and for those who aren't, you know, I, I love everyone. My heart is open. Most recently, I had a situation in which I was applying the practice. Uh, and I did, a, I did a, a fairly good job on it by myself. And what, what the situation was is I had created a narrative about someone who uh, I work with. And this, this has not happened often at all, but this one has. And, uh, and I didn't feel like I was getting support on something that I was working on because they had a different way of doing it. And so again, that's my ego saying that it should be done the way that I think it should be done. And if there is any uh, half-hearted uh, support of my idea or a different way of doing it, then I can feel myself closing. And so I'm trying to keep <laughs> those doors, those, 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 those uh, doors of my heart open. And, and it's easy to do if I would just let that go. But every once in a while, you know, I'll reach out to someone uh, and, and the, the ranks are, are growing or increasing. I'll reach out to a friend for a little help. And last week I reached out to my friend, uh, John DeCuna, and I explained the experience that I was having and he listened. You know, he didn't offer any feedback or anything like that. He just listened. You know, uh, he didn't give me agreement. <laughs> about what I, I, was, I was saying, you know, the ego loves confirmation. And so it just strengthens that confirmation bias. And then you can't see anything objectively or, or see a different possibility for uh, a solution. And so, and then at the end, as I, as I do all the time with people that are doing the practice, I said, hey, what do you think? Do you mind sharing your thoughts? And he said, well, Keith, at the same narrative about this person, and uh, I got to tell you, every step of the way, when they want to go into a different direction, they said, hey, I got this, Dr. Kuna. Uh, let me let me let me work on it. And I said, wait, 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 I don't think you're saying it's like, I got this. I got this. Just give me a moment. I'll work on it. And they would go to work on it. And then for for him, the results weren't happening fast enough. So he'd go back again. It's like, this is a process. I got it. Don't you worry. And in every situation, he said that that other leader was always right. It was always a better solution in every case. And what that did for me was it was a a um, it was a solution to you know uh, disappearing my narrative about this person. It was the remedy to hear it from someone who was already doing the practice. And again, I was trying to do it. I was doing it on my own of trying to, you know, keep an open heart and move beyond my limits and barriers that I created around who this person was or, who their, or what their behavior was like. He helped me uh, overcome that. One, because I trusted him. And, and two, because it's coming from a good place. He's doing the practice. And so that little help from my friend allowed me to go into a meeting with this person the next day completely open. And I would not have done that. And in the past, what since I've been on the practice, I've had other experiences in which I reach out to other people who may not have been doing the practice, but I reached out to them and I asked them a very different question. If it's someone who I'm struggling with seeing uh, how they can be, you know, helpful or kind, or seeing seeing them at their core, their authentic self, because of my narrative, not so much about what they're doing, but because of my uh, barriers, uh, when I reach out to them, I ask them a question. Tell me what it is about this person that you appreciate, that you're grateful for, that makes you, you know, like them. 
And when you ask the question that way, people will start to share, here's what I like about them, or here's what they've done for me, uh, or here's how they made me feel, or they picked me up when I was down. And when I hear from that perspective, it's a game changer. You know, it is really a game changer. Uh, and then I start to see them differently. I start to open up and see them uh, more clearly uh, beyond what my narrative is, is about them. So in this case, a little help from my friend, Dr. DeCuna was, 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 was really, really helpful. Um, and then just a personal story here that many years ago, I was struggling with uh, a very personal story. I was struggling with um, my stepfather and I grew up, as many of you know, who've listened to some previous podcasts, a very abusive household. My stepfather was physically abusive, verbally abusive. And I grew up that, you know, I, I watched a lot of domestic violence in, in my childhood and I was, you know, uh, on the receiving end of it too. So I grew up with a lot of resentment, uh, a lot of resentment. And it was really hard for me to overcome that. And what it, the, the cost of that was, is that I didn't let people in uh, and I could shut down very easily. The moment that there was conflict, you know, I... I was out. <laughs> I left the scene. I withdrew. I closed my heart and uh, I withdrew connection and affection. So, uh, again, that's not the answer. So with this childhood and my mom, when I was in my uh, mid, mid teens, my mom and my stepfather got divorced. And so I continued to carry this on with me another 20 years about my stepfather and all of the hurt and pains and scars from my childhood. And then one day, this was before the practice, I don't know how I had this thought, but I asked my mom, like, why did you choose him? <laughs> like, of all the people you chose this guy, you know, it wasn't like my biological father. Like, if she didn't choose my biological father, I wouldn't be here. But it's my stepfather. Why'd you choose this guy of all the guys? And she said to me, she said, Keith, she said, I was in my early 20s and uh, I, I had you. And I really felt the pressure of make, you know, of getting pregnant uh, at a time where to get pregnant out of wedlock was really, really looked down upon. And, uh, and no one was extending me any kind of grace. I was going to go off to college, but now I had a, had a young, I had a baby. And my mother was very, very hard. She was not understanding. And I had been a great student and a great kid growing up. I did all the chores at home. I was the, the, I was a, the perfect child in terms of never causing a problem, doing everything that my parents asked of me. And, um, and I was a model student, you know, set to go off to college. And then I get pregnant with you. And then that one event, uh, really, uh, my mom changed like that regarding me. And I was like, I felt like I was the worst thing, you know, based on her language. And, you know, I was living with him at the time and, and she made me leave. And so I met your stepfather. And, uh, and at that time, he gave me great comfort. And when I say about great comfort, I was beating myself up because I was a perfectionist back then. And I was beating myself up for making such a great mistake. And I was grateful that I had you, but I was, but that I felt like I had messed up my life. And he just looked, looked at me and said, he said, Dora, he says, you're perfect just the way you are. You know, I don't care what anybody else says, you're perfect. You're resilient and you will figure this thing out. So don't for one second take that on. And when I, I'm getting, I'm getting emotional right now just thinking about it. My mom, I love her so much. I have so much gratitude and admiration for her. And to know that when she had a moment, which weren't many, that she needed comfort, that she needed a safe place to land, that he gave that to her, wow. In that moment of her sharing that, everything that I experienced with him went away. None of it mattered. My narratives about it, the stories, the scars, all healed. Because he gave comfort to someone who I love with all of me at a time when she needed it most. And other people went around to give it to her or chose not to. And so in that way, that story was a little help from my friend to help me see him differently. And it also was the beginning of me not judging people by their behavior. 
I continued to do it, but I became aware that there was a different way of interacting with people and seeing the humanity in other people. And so, so many thanks to Dr. Kuna, many thanks to uh, my mom for sharing this so I can see my stepfather differently uh, and everyone else, you know, during my lifetime. And as I continue to be on the planet of, of helping me on this journey. So I want to say thank you to all my friends for giving me a little help. Thank you.